guys, this is Jessica Lorenko with this brand new YouTube channel. I'm so excited to be here today to share with you a tutorial of one of my cards. After so many requests, I was finally able to separate some time and learn how to do it. And here I am with my first video ever. Hopefully you will enjoy watching me create this card. This is the card I'm going to share with you today. And maybe you can get some inspiration to try and make one yourself. Uh, I think it may, making handmade cards are so special and so much fun. So let's see if you can stick around with me and see how I put this card together. As you can see, uh, I made this card and I made some other cards with the same technique and same stamp set. The stamp set I used for this card was from Stampendous. It's Daisy's called Daisy Tanks. It's a beautiful stamp set. I love it. If you are very good at drawing, you will draw the flower like I do sometimes, but I'm not like expert or not, I'm not a specialist in drawing, but I love florals. So having a stamp set, it facilitates your life. It's so much easier and you just stamp the image and you have the image to work on it and coloring with any media you want. I use this for this card in specific and I love it, the results. So from Stampendous, Daisy, thanks. That's the name of the stamp set. Um, this is the card I'm going to show with you. I pop out here a little butterfly to make the card more special and I think it came out gorgeous. I don't know if you can um, brag about your creations, but sometimes I do. Like this card, for example, is the one I chose for my first video because I really love the way this card turned out. Uh, the flowers are, it's just for me, uh, with the coloring, the shading, if, uh, it looked like the flower popped from the, the panel of paper, and I love it. So as you can see, I made this in uh, shades of pink. This, this one I made exactly the same, but I put a shadow on the sentiment that I didn't do in, in I, do, I did it here, and I didn't do it there. So you can vary from one to another. This one I did in yellow, and I think also it's beautiful. But in this one, what I pop out was in the butterfly was just a little circle over here. Sometimes it's just a little thing that differ from the flat panel will make such a difference. That's what I think. And I had an idea to try this and I did it and I love it. And I put this little detail here that I also color with Copic markers and I put this uh, stripe of black paper. Inside it looks like this. Inside I kept it all the same because I think simple and clean inside so you can have a lot of space white space to create or write your personal message for your loved ones this one is darker red on the flower but i just stamped the word thank you is the flat panel without any any eclipse effect or i didn't pop out anything in this image so as you can see i got excited and i love the card so i went and i made made a bunch of them so i can have a set and i can have them ready one says thanks a bunch and the other ones love and i think it, it's beautiful and i think someone who will receive you one of these cards will love it i hope you love it too so let's get started and how i put this card together so I started with my Misty stamping tool. If you don't have a Misty, you can use the stamping block, like this one or a round one with any image you want. You just stick the image there and you use, and this one has the lines and the measurements, make also life very easy when you want to stamp and re-stamp if you need. So let's do this. I am gonna stamp in the white panel like this one. So let me see if I'm on camera here. Oh, I don't think I'm gonna use this one. This one already has an image. So you can use a paper like this. So what I do here. You get the image. You put the image where you choose that the, you want the image to go. Like I tilted a little bit to the side of the stems, so I have the space to put the sentiment over there. And then you pick up the image with a cover, like so. And for Copic coloring, I use Memento Tuxedo. It's a very good quality ink, and it dry fast, and doesn't damage when you use alcohol marker, and I love it. 
and a little bubble over there. So you go and you stamp. And I like my images very defined. If I use black, I like very defined the lines. So the good thing about the Misty is that if you need to re-stamp, it will go exactly where you want it because you didn't move the paper or you didn't move the stamp from where you stick on the cover of the Misty. So as you can see, we have here a very defined, very defined lined, outlined image. Now I'm cleaning the stamp right away so it doesn't get dry with the ink on it. Put it back the image on the cover. Put it over there. And now we have the panel right here. So what I did here is I have one that is completely dry. Like this one, you can see it's the same thing. But what I also did is I went ahead and I color one already started. So I can save some time on the video. And you don't have to see me color the whole entire thing because even though I like that, I think it will take a longer time because coloring, believe me, it takes a long time. So I went ahead, I colored the two flowers and the two smaller stems. And now I'm gonna color the big flower with you on camera with, with that stem. So as I told you, I use Copic, Copic markers. So we're gonna start with the RV10. And if you don't have Copic markers, believe me, you can achieve this technique with other mediums like color pencil that is very good for shading. So we're gonna start with the RV10. And here how I started. I start to lay down the colors. I usually, when I use Copics, I use light color first and then darker. I know some people like to use darker color first and then lighter for the shading, but I don't know. I just think that it's better to use light first lighter first, lighter, lighter colors, and go darker as you go, because I think it's easier if you messed up or if you didn't like it, the shading that you put it, it's easier to go lighter when you start with the lighter, then go all darker and then you wanna lighter and you can't. So that's the way I do it. But again, I'm not an, Specialist, I'm not an expert in, in Copic markers. I know some people out there that do amazing coloring or that does amazing coloring and I'm still learning. I hope one day I can come close to be as good as some out there that I follow on social media and I love what they do. They, they color in a way that the images look like pictures that they took, like, you know, those amazing pictures that photographers take. Yeah, that's people that are expert in Copic, Copics, and they color in a way that the shading, it's just perfection. Not even close to that. Hopefully one day I'll be, because I love it. It's so much fun. And even being an amateur um, and now, uh, Sometimes I don't know where is the light source. I just go with I think it feels right for me. But you know what? I have fun and I think you shouldn't be afraid. And I can share with you how afraid I was to use Copics. I got this collection of Copics, so precious and so awesome. And I got it like many, many months ago. And I put it in the shelves here, and there it was every day I look at it. Now I move to the RV21, is the darker color. And you may ask why I keep taking all the both sides of the, the, the cover, the caps. Uh, I heard someone on the internet, on YouTube videos, um, someone coloring with Copics. I'm not sure, I think it was Alice from Kit and Clutter. She does amazing, guys. I'm a fan of her. 
because she does amazing coloring and she, she gives classes, online classes as well. I didn't have the opportunity to take any classes with her. Uh, hopefully I will soon, but if you could check her out, I may have her link down, down below. I almost said downstairs. I may have her link uh, down below so you can, if you don't know her, you may check out her online classes and her social media because she's awesome and she's so sweet guys she always encourage and uh, she has a sweet voice to hear too and i love her and she has inspired me and to be honest uh, like i was telling you i put the collection of copics on my shelf and for months guys for really really long months probably five months if not more i kept looking at it and i was so um i don't know frightened i don't know <laughs> insecure i think is the word i was insecure of starting because i was like what if i suck at it it's so expensive and what if i don't do well and i what if i hate it and what if and i kept doubting myself and telling myself that i couldn't do it and what if this what if that and one day I was like I think I, I listened to Alice encourage people so much about the coloring things and give it a try and be satisfied with the beginner's results and then I was like you know what I'm gonna try and now I cannot get enough of it I keep using Copics for everything now we use the RV32 is the third darker color and I love it, guys. Of course, I'm not expert, like I said. I don't do as well as I wish I would, but I'm satisfied, guys. And it's so much fun. And I love the results. I really do. So I have so much to learn, but I'm not going to stop trying. And even when I don't like it that much, I'm still going to share to encourage people who are starting to not feel the way I did because... I think you only learn when you do it, right? It's trying and it's making mistakes that you're gonna learn and you get better and better. And I believe coloring, like Alice says, it's practice. You practice and you get better. So as you, as you see, I move for the lighter to the darker and we are in the third shade of red or dark pink as I can say that way. So what I'm telling you now about this is that when you move from the light color to the darker color, what I try to do or not to do is when you go move to the darker, try not to cover everything you put it there because the idea is to leave different shades because if you have a, only one flat color, you're not going to have the variation of shades. So as I go with the, move with the darker, I try not to cover all the light color I lay under. Because if I do that, I think I will defeat the purpose, right? I put in different shades. Why? If I go with the red and cover all the light pink. So now to give the flower even more depth, I will use the RV29 that is not pink, but it's more like a red, crimson, that's the name. So the RV29, I'm gonna give more depth to the, the flower. And what I do here also is, I try to use the pen standing up like this, so I can lay down more lines instead of a flat, color right there and another thing is I go where the petals one petal goes on top of the other like for example let me finish this one and then I'll show you for example this let me see if you can see this petal the little side of the petal goes on top of the other so um, I believe here is where the sh shadow of the leaf that is on the top goes. So what I do is 
I lay some shadow over there. See, like so. Because I think that's that's what makes sense, right? Because if the leaves are on top of each other, there's a shadow in the piece of the petal. And I darken, darken, darkening, darken. I don't know. You tell me how to say. You guys, sorry my pronunciation because sometimes I blank of the words. I think I can say I darken that part over there of the petal that meets the center, like right here. Because it makes sense to think that there will be where more shadows are because of, like it goes in around here. So that's what I did in the other flowers. So here, a little more, being very careful, like I said, not to cover, not to cover all the light shades of pink that I laid before. And I try to leave as much white as I possibly can in the middle. And don't worry about the little drops of color that you go a little bit outside. I'm not a a person that likes to color outside the lines, believe me. But making art for so long, sometimes you just do it. And I learn, even though I'm a perfectionist, uh, handmade things cannot be perfect. That's what I have to tell you. If you are a perfectionist, just you need to have to learn to live with it, the imperfections. Because the imperfections make handmade things beautiful. That's what I learned. So what I did here, see, we're done, not done because we're gonna do the center, but the petals are done. So that's the petals. Now we're gonna move with the center of the flower. Pale yellow will be my first color. And we're gonna do the center. Here, it is something that I definitely learned. Let me see if I'm on camera. If you can see from there, I hope you can. I learned this from Alice, the kid and clutter. That lady is awesome. So what I do here, instead of just cover everything with the yellow, I go and I like, it's an emotion of more like shaking my hand. And if you do that, you kind of gonna skip some white spots there and create, if you can see from the camera, I'm not sure if you can, but it create this texture on the image, instead of just flat yellow, it create this texture there. So now we're gonna move for the yellowish beige, is the Y23. Did I say, did I explain before why did I took the, why did, did I take the, the two caps? I heard someone saying that it helps with the flow of the, the ink from inside. Like when you, sometimes you do um, run into that. You open the cap and it, it, this blob of ink comes out. So I learn, I don't know if it, it is true, but I at least I feel like it works for me. I learned that if you take both sides of the marker, it balances the flow. And I'm doing that for a long time and I like it. I think it, it really works. Now it's the Y26. As you can see, I go with more ink towards to the side right here where the circle of the middle meets with the petals. So you go like that with this shaky motion. Why I go there? Because it's supposed to have a shadow over there, right? If it was a real flower. So after I do that, 
Now, I used uh, go golden yellow. The golden yellow, it's the Y17. And now I just go and lay some dots. I think that gives even more texture to the image. You don't need to go all in the white because I like to save some white, even though here what I do is I go back to my lighter color, Y11, it's pale yellow. And now I just smoothed out this. If there's any harsh lines over there, I go like, like so. And then after I do that, to give it back some of my light on the flowers, I use my pen, my Signal Uniball white pen. I love this pen. I use it to create highlights in my, in my coloring. So what you do here is I go there and I put some dots. Can you see well from there? Put some dots over there. Somewhere more some places less just to create some highlights see just like i did over here and over there and i also go on the petals and if by any chance i have some harsh lines with the darker color and I want to have some more white that I didn't left behind. Now you can go with the Uniball white pen and you, as you can see, it's no secret. You just scribble some lines over there and you will have, you will have some more highlights in certain places that you'd like to have. So here I kind of cover a lot. So I go back there and I give back some scribble of white color. And this pen, because it's a gel pen, uh, like you putting some gel on the flower and it does create some uh, texture. And I love that. I love that gives some texture to the petals. the flower is done I hope you like it so far now we're gonna use YG03 that will be for the stem the stem is very skinny I hope you can see from there I just lay some green over there I try to leave some highlights but I also can create that with my uniball pen so YG03 and now YG17. Where the stem comes from under the petals, I darken. I hope I'm pronouncing the right way. I darken those pieces. And if I'm not pronouncing the right way, I know you got it. You are very smart people, <laughs> right? And if I say something wrong in English, you are free to laugh. Just don't leave any harsh comment. But you are free to leave comments. I would love to read your comments. And I would love if you can also subscribe to my channel, just to give me support. I just started and I would love to have your support and your encouragement and your comments and your love and your ideas will be awesome to read. I love to read comments. And now I can also lay some highlights on the stems. Just a little, it doesn't have to be much. See, you can put some lines, some dots, like the sun is shining there. And the flowers here, I did some dots as well, so you don't have to go crazy about it. But in some specific places, you can go and 
put some dots of light. See, I love it. And if I don't control myself, I'm gonna keep putting dots until everything has dots on it. I don't know why. I'm crazy that way. So, this is it, guys. Look at how beautiful. I love it. So now that the flower is done, how how I'm gonna finish the card. So I have here the base of the card. This is Nina Solar White. I cut in four and a half by five and a half, and I'm gonna mount this card over here on the base. But before I do that, how did I do, let me show you here, how did I do this technique over here is what I'm gonna show you now, and the inside. So to create the technique of the butterfly, that's what I did over here, let me see. Yes, I anticipate this one so we don't have to spend much time doing it. So here you can see, can you see from there? Here you can see I cut from the panel a butterfly with my die cut. This die cut is from Simon Says Stamp calls Stitching Butterflies. It's beautiful. If you follow me on Instagram or Facebook, you'll see that I have many cards uh, made with this die cutting from this butterfly that I think the shape is beautiful. They have two different shapes and I love it. So if you're interested, that's what I use. So I cut with my die cutting. I'm not gonna do here right now on camera because it, it takes a while and it makes a lot of noise. So I cut from the image like you, like you can see here. And then you create a hole. And then I went and I mount on the panel, on the base of the card, four and a quarter by five and a half. And what I did also, I used the die cut and I cut three times in white, just to cover the hole. I could even leave it like that, as you can see. I could just leave it like that. I think it's, it would also be doesn't want to stay there. I think it will also be cute and white because it matches with the card. But what I did is since I cut it from the image, I saved this, the pieces. I saved the pieces and now we're gonna glue those pieces with the body of the butterfly right there. And what I use here, guys, it's my Tombow glue, multi-Tombow glue. So I'm gonna put some, uh, am I off camera? I'm gonna put some over here on the body of the butterfly. And since I put the butterfly right where belong, again, I go with the body right there. And I pick up the butterfly, turn around, put glue now on top of the body, and I go back where I should be. I hope it's in there. I go back, oops. I go back there. And I put it exactly back on the opening. Like so. I can use my bow folder to lift, lift, um, lift up the body like this. And the, the antennas, the little tail, tail, butterfly has tail. No, that's the body. So put the body and then we'll be like this. Beautiful, love it. So after I do that, what did I do with the sentiment? Let me show you right here. The sentiment I use, um, am I on camera? I use die cutting also from Simon Says Stamp, die cutting called Love, and it's beautiful. It has the word written and the shadow. So as you can see here, I did only the word, and here I did it with the shadow. They both beautiful, and for me, it's the same beauty, it doesn't matter. You can choose which one is more pleasing to you. So I use the die cutting, like you, like you can see here, and I cut the word, and I cut the shadow on this one. I can do it, I can do it here with a shadow and I can do it here without the shadow, like so. So this I cut three times, as you can see, three times, and then that piece didn't glue well. 
and then you're gonna go there and you're gonna glue over there see I'm gonna even glue one more to show you so this has two and now I'm gonna put it one more I like this bottle of glue because it has a thin um, tip so when when the die cutting is very tiny like this it's easy for you to and you can use use your I don't know the name of that thing I forgot tweezers I don't know but for this one I'm I'm only gonna use my hands so you go there and you make sure you glue in this where it belongs and the good thing about this glue is that gives you a moment of grace so you can go and you can move around and even pick up the excess of glue that is coming out so as you can see just to make pop out a little more when you put it on the card so after this is done I'm gonna use my misty again just to make sure because like I told you as a good perfectionist I don't like nothing crooked so what I do here I put it all the way in the end to be very to be very still and I use my ruler so I'm gonna make sure the sentiment goes exactly where I want it to go and in a straight way like I wanted to put it over here so let me use the glue to make sure you gonna be exactly where I want it to be so yes so I go back with my mono glue you don't need to put it down it's just a little you can see me from there I hope so so you put a glue all around and then you're gonna go and you're gonna let go and then you go back with your ruler and then you can move exactly where you want it to be and then you can press it because now you know it's straight yes very straight and even if you see some excess of glue there it will dry clear so you're not gonna have any problem with it so here it is the card from the front but what is missing i put my mist away but what is missing is the word you like i did over here love you uh the die cutting love from simon says stamp has a stamp set that is filled with sentiments and written beautiful beautiful i love it so from this one i got the little u right here the little u. this u i use for so many compliments so many uh sentiments uh, sentiments that i put it on cards what do you do here i put it over there like so and i like it right there let me see It'll be more close to the word. And, and then with the misty, because there's the lines over there, it's very good because you can put it and see if it's completely straight. See, if you think it's not, you can go there and fix the word the way you want it to be, and then it'll be perfect. And now you can go for uh, little stamps like this one. I use Versafine. Versafine is for detailed and very small. Very small stamps. I think I messed up my ink. I hope I didn't. So you go there and you stamp the word you. Yay! I didn't mess up. So I use my stamping cleaner. Is this little clot that gets dry and then you put it in the water and it gets all soft again and it cleans so well i don't live without that guys without that little clot i don't because it's awesome so i can put that in my list also so after this part is done is the front of the card is complete i love it now we're gonna do the inside of the card the inside of the card i use this little rectangle stitched uh, die cut is also from Simon Says Stamp. It um, has many different sides, sizes. 
and it, I chose this one to cut a panel and to put it over there. So what I'm gonna do now is to cut a panel like so. I cut a panel in the white paper and then I will come up with this. Also not gonna cut it here, so just showing you. You come up with this piece of paper and then what I did for the inside the card is I go all the way to the end right here and I use my stamp set again I just decided to put some something inside I didn't like all white so I went all the way in the edge with the flower part and I pick up the image and I use again you can use Versafine or you can use Memento, it doesn't matter. Um, so I put it only in the piece that I'm gonna not to waste so much ink. I put it only in the end of the flowers and you go there and you make sure you give a good press. And there you have the inside of the card. Let me go quickly and clear, clean my stamp. See? Perfect. Nice and clean. Put this back. And now you have the center, the center of the inside of the car right here. And since I could go with my heat gun and dry, but since I like it very dry because I'm afraid I'm gonna rub my hand on top to glue the paper and gonna mess up the paper, I had one that I did it before hand, so I can put it right here. So having a craft mat like I have over here, it's very good because have the lines so help you align everything you're gonna put it and this glue is very good because you don't need to put so much a little bit goes a long way and now I go with this and line up with my craft mat and then I go over there and I decide where is center then you can let go. And like I told you, the grace time is awesome because you can fix your panel, fix your, your card the way you want it to be. I have glue on my hand. If you by any chance you smudge something, this is the trick. Sand eraser, mono. That's what I use from Tombow. It's the same uh, brand from the the glue created this sand eraser that if you have like for example here has a, some glue and then I rub my hand on top and I let some glue there you s this sand is like sand the paper and take everything away see if you have any boo-boo in the card of course you don't want to send to someone with any smudges or fingerprint so what you do is just sand that part and it doesn't damage the paper Nice and clean and you. See how beautiful? I hope you like it, guys. I love it. And I love to create it here on video with you for the first time. Uh, I was very excited and anxious at the same time. And I finally, after recording like 20 times, exaggerating, but pretty much, uh, here I am with a video that I will post. And I hope you guys can take some time and watch and enjoy and if you're not learning anything at least get some inspiration so this is the card we created today yay we finally done i hope you enjoy i hope you like it there's more here to share and i hope you get some inspiration and please if you do create something inspire what i uh, with what i show you i hope you can share or tag me or find me on social media i'm jessica lorenko jessica lorenko Jessica underscore Lorenko TX for Texas, uh, where in, on Instagram I post most of my, my art photos. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to 
create a new thing and very soon have a other video another video here for you to enjoy with me and spend some time with me and if you would love to leave some comments i would de definitely and certainly love to read your comments i what do what you think about this card if you like it if you ever did or will do this technique or try out if you try out something please tag me on instagram so i can see what you create inspired by this card and the way i, I create this card and i will love it guys i will certainly love to read your comments and if i have the time i will answer all of you Thank you so much for sticking around with me today. And if you could, please press, press the subscription, subscription button um, so you can follow me and see all the videos I create. And also the notification uh, bell. If you press that, you won't miss. You're always going to receive a notification when I post new things. So I hope to see you soon, guys. Thank you so much. And thanks for watching. Bye.